So the last endocrine organ for this week is the parathyroid glands. So these are the small little glands, four of them located on the thyroid. You will not be able to see this in the rat because they're so small, you can barely find the thyroid. Um, and so they are involved in calcium homeostasis. That's their main function. So we're gonna use them as an example of drawing a feedback loop um, for calcium regulation. So I wanna start with though, calcium, make sure that calcium regulation, calcium homeostasis. So calcium in the blood, blood calcium is a regulated variable. The amount of calcium in the blood needs to be maintained, the amount. Blood calcium, regulated variable, that means it's gonna be maintained by negative feedback, right? Because that's what regulated variables, that's how we regulate them. And this is gonna be regulated by the endocrine system, the parathyroid. Calcium, we will see this semester several times. So blood calcium is important, first of all, because most electrolytes in the blood, we have to just maintain them so that we have um, the correct osmolarity inside and outside of our, our cells. We also need calcium to be at certain levels because calcium is required for muscle contraction. Some of the calcium needed for muscle contraction comes from within the cell, but some of it comes from the bloodstream as well. Um, it's required for synaptic communication. So the release of neurotransmitter is dependent on exocytosis, which requires calcium. You don't need to know either of these yet or how they work, but I just want you to know you'll see them and it starts to get it why we, why we care about this and trying to have you remember this is a homeostatically regulated variable. Why does it need to be homeostatically regulated? Because um, we need it for things and we, so we need the levels to be within a normal range. Okay, so let's diagram the response of the body to low blood calcium levels. So normal blood calcium is typically between calcium um, 8.5 to 10.5 milligrams per deciliter. Now you don't need to memorize that amount, that number, th those numbers, that range, but I think it can be helpful to see that as a more specific for what, what the set point is and what it means to be lower or higher than that. Um, we're gonna go through low blood calcium levels. There are responses to high blood calcium. Um, some of those described in your book with calcitonin and the thyroid aren't thought to occur as much in humans. Um, and I don't really want to talk about the thyroid right now. I want to talk about parathyroid, which responds to low blood calcium, parathyroid gland. So let's say our stimulus, so what's our stimulus, what is our stimulus going to be to initiate parathyroid response? Um, we are going to have low blood calcium, right? This is our stimulus. We could say this is maybe like six milligrams per deciliter. If you like numbers, we could also call this hypo calcemia. Oh, did I, did I spell that right? Is a question that I have. I will check that. Okay, let's assume that's right. I'll let you know if it's not. This is our stimulus. Stimulus is going to be detected by our endocrine organ in this case, the parathyroid gland, which is going to be both our sensor or receptor, same thing, and our integrator or control center.
the thera parathyroid gland is going to have an output signal. What is that output signal? A hormone, I don't like that H. Parathyroid hormone, that's easy, right? Is produced by the parathyroid. This is our output signal. that is going to target our effector or target organs. There are going to be three for the regulation of calcium. And we're gonna see one in more detail later. That one is this one. So one target, targets, make myself smaller here. Target slash effectors. Where's one place, if we have low calcium, where can we get that from? The bone. So I'm just gonna put bone. I'll talk to you about the cells that are responsible for this. There's certain cells that break down bone to release calcium into the blood. So we'll see those when we get to the skeletal system. This is talked about in your book in the skeletal system chapter. So bone, the effect or the response of this organ is going to be bone breakdown. Two, number two target is going to be the kidneys. What do you think the kidneys are gonna do? Retain calcium. This is called reabsorption as well. So we'll just, we're gonna put retain though. Retain calcium. So instead of peeing it out, it's gonna stay in your body. Less is lost in the urine. Number three, intestines. What do you think? Increase absorption of calcium. That's something that can be regulated. How much is taken into your body in the first place? All right, so all three of those responses are doing what? Increasing, increasing plasma calcium. Even though they're, they're increasing calcium in the blood, that's what we want to do. That is negative feedback because it's turning off the system, PTH will be lowered in response to this effect. Shuts off the system, including PTH, parathyroid hormone secretion. Just wanna mention here, there are endocrine disorders that are pretty fun to talk about and actually pretty common. Um, parathyroid disease is not, not the most common, but um, I do know people who have it. So if you have dysregulation of this hormone, that causes your system to be a little funky, right? So high activity of your parathyroid would result in high PTH. This is called hyperparathyroidism. This is going to cause excessive calcium reabsorption from the bone. So uh, excessive this stuff. And the main consequence could be um, bone breakdown and damage, fractures, bone deformities, uh, a consequence of hyperparathyroidism. Low PTH is called hypoparathyroidism. And in that case, this deficiency of the hormone um, actually can result in dysfunction of, of muscles, paralysis, spasms, because of the because calcium is important for our cells to function. That that balance of the inside and outside of the cell, and for muscle contractions. So, just a brief introduction there to some one set of endocrine disorders. Um, there's basically hypo and hyper, meaning low and high, for any hormone you can think of, and that's uh, an endocrine disorder that's um, you can look more into.